it's Edge Reviews. So today I want to show you something. Uh, if you've ever used a bubble level, I recently had uh, a video about uh, a bubble level that I had a, a small problem with. You can go check that out if you care. But uh, one thing that I do not like about bubble levels from the past, right, here's an example of a 30 mil bubble level. And this is just a cheap guy. This is when I was first getting into this. If you put it on a flat surface, this thing isn't even level. Uh, this, this flat bottom, it was not milled very well. Uh, it's got a very small, if you can even pick it up, it's got a very small bubble in there. It is so bright in this room. There you go. Really small bubble, and there's lots of wiggle room in this bubble. All right, so you actually have to put marker marks and fatten up the lines there to help make the decision if it's level or not. So leveling this up, you would put it on your rifle, but you have to take these two screws out to fit it up on the tube. And that doesn't sound like a big deal, but tor uh, torquing those screws actually moves the level a little bit one way or the other. And so it's incredibly hard to keep this thing um, from, from being just a little bit bent from what you wanted it to be. There was always a little bit more angle than you wanted, and it's just annoying. I did not really like this old design. One thing that I really do like, though, and I want to give credit where it's due, is uh, this Lone Star Precision Group. They came up with something that works better, and maybe they didn't come up with it, but um, I see they're using it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give them praise for that part. They're using technology that makes more sense. Um, it's a one Allen screw design, and how it fits together. If you can see there, this part where my fingers are, that's where the Allen tightens down, and it's milled properly so that it fits real nice and snug, and you're putting the tension with just one Allen. And what I like about the bubble, in this Lone Star bubble, is that it, it fills the gap completely. And so there's none of this monkey business trying to figure out where it's supposed to be at. It doesn't really camp bad. It's really easy to apply one of these. Um, I, I thought it was a, a pretty good product. Overall, I haven't released a, an official review yet. I had one small problem, and I let Lone Star uh, know about it through that video. But uh, I had a, a little contact with them. And uh, man, they are receptive people. You know, in the gun industry, not everybody is receptive. Believe it or not, some of the companies that I do business with and talk with, they just don't want to hear it. And that's not cool. And I love receptive people. Uh, I'm a school teacher and a preacher. I'm a pastor too. And uh, I just love receptive people. I love people who can take feedback. Um, one of the products that Lone Star is producing right now is uh, right here. Let me set it up for you. This is the next stage up from your standard bubble level and I'll flip it around so you can actually see what I'm holding. This is a cosine angle indicator with a bubble level on top with that same design. It's got one Allen here and then a proper mechanism here that holds the unit together. I really like the idea of the cosine indicator. If you're ever shooting at steep angles either uphill or downhill, maybe out of a tree or down a little bluff or something like that, a cosine indicator is a sweet piece of gear, especially if you're into precision shooting. Now, I understand that everyday uh, sh folks who are just shooting pop cans in the backyard, uh, they might not know how to have fun with something like this. But as the shooting industry increases and people are getting more intelligent and they're learning more about the stuff they're shooting and why they miss so much, things like this are becoming more popular. And I think this is a really sweet, affordable option. Um, I'm not giving my... Uh, approval of it just yet because I have not put this on my rifle yet and so I don't want to lie and make it sound like I'm just right away giving them kudos I like the design I like the look and I like the idea um, so far the build quality it seems rugged um, one thing I really like that they did is they actually capped this bubble level so this bubble level cannot come out it's capped on top now this cap could be removed and you might want to put a little blue Loctite on that if you really care um, but I like the idea, it can switch back and forth from side, so when you're, you're mounting on your rifle, you can actually flip it over, and what I'm looking at right now, I can actually see the level a little better than when I'm just have my head down and I'm in that position, especially if I'm shooting from the prone, it's hard for me sometimes with my eyes to look up and, and catch that thing. So I really like the idea of what I'm seeing here. I put it on a level surface and I did indicate that this is balancing on zero, that's appropriate. It's got uh, all your, all your uh, indicators, looks like 
20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 98. Yeah, it's got all the indicators on the side, everything that uh, you would practically need on there. And I'm really, really digging that red line in there. Easy to see, pops out even in, in some darker settings. Um, like I said, this isn't an official endorsement just yet. I'm gonna do a review and I'm gonna let you know what I think of this product, but it's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually, I was deciding what do I wanna throw it on. And uh, as far as shooting at steep angles, around here in Minnesota. Uh, most of the time that's gonna be with my pellet gun. And I do a lot with my pellet gun. Hopefully that doesn't bore you guys to death. But uh, maybe with my 22, I'll try some out. I might pick up some more and throw my other rifles if I really like the product enough. I'll let you know. Right now it's going on my pellet gun. The only downside I can see so far from uh, this kind versus the old kind is the old kind I could just throw it on without taking my scope uh, mount off. This one, you kind of have to take the mount off so that there's enough room, at least with this first focal plane optic I'm running right now. I just need enough room to squeeze this guy in there, so I'm gonna take it off. I probably won't even lose my zero. Honestly, I've taken rings off and put them right back on, and as long as you're good about it and you're very even, uh, you're probably not gonna lose your zero. So I'm gonna mount this real quick, I'll let you watch that, and then I'll close in with some final thoughts before we get to reviewing this product. All right, so if you're looking down your scope like this, normally up here is where your level is. So you're looking just over, whoops, you're looking just over the top of your scope using your periphery to see that thing. And uh, like I said, this feature allows it to be placed to the side right next to your cosine indicator. And you'll see I have the rifle at uh, about a 10 degree angle. That's like your, your most frequent angle if you're shooting outdoors 10 degrees is pretty much a common one um, it's a good one to memorize anyways but uh, one of the things I like about this is that underneath here in order to get this piece level got dark there we go in order to get this piece level if I lift that up right here you can just see a little nub hanging up that's an allen screw which you can tighten or loosen to raise or lower this level and get it to that adequate place for uh, what's level to your reticle. And so I think it must just be a, a mechanical piece in here that just allows it to stay flat. And it's not level right now, I need to uh, raise that up a little bit or drop it down a little bit to get it to be a level. But I thought that's a pretty cool feature. It's a pretty good idea um, if you're gonna have that thing flip over to the side to have a way that's adjustable to make sure that it can get um, level if it's not quite there. It's just a small fine tuning process. So I like that. So I'm resting my rifle right now on this Caldwell Field Pod dead shot. And uh, my cat's going to knock over the camera stand. And it's really helpful to have this level on here because it's super easy to cant your rifle when it's in one of these rests and not know that you're canting it. It just changes the way the rifle feels. And uh, it's just super handy to have a level that's um, accurate on there. And just something to look at and monitor how you're holding your rifle. Most people don't realize that left hand and right handed people, whoops, left handed and right handed people can't their rifles both a little differently. And uh, I have the advantage of having some left handed friends. They're just born backwards, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I can always go and ask them if they see any can't. I look and I see if I can't. A lot of people um, wonder is there some sort of trick or process to keeping that reticle level? And uh, honestly, there's not many that really work. You can hang a rope. And weigh it down and gravity should be 90 degrees down um, unfortunately wind plays a role in that and then uh, sometimes the rope will 
just be a little bit off, but usually that's the best one if you want to keep your reticle straight up and down, trying to make it real level to the rifle on a level surface. It's kind of a lot of work. Another one I've seen is to shine a flashlight through the bell, project it on a wall where you have a straight line that you know is 100% straight, and make sure it's lined up and then tighten it down. That one works pretty well and it's kind of frustrating though because you're going to have to do part of it in the dark. Um, I just use my eyes though. That's what I've been doing the last few years. I've just been using my eyes, looking back and forth. I make an adjustment sometimes if I have to. I try to line it up with something level. I might hang a rope or something like that. Um, but uh, I try to make sure there's no cant in that reticle. That will change your point of impact a long, long ways off. Watch some of my other um, YouTube videos about uh, long range precision pellet gun shooting. And I'll talk a little bit about cant and you'll see an example where even at just like 100 yards, I mean, I'm aiming at one target and I can't the rifle on purpose and I hit another target altogether. I can change quite a bit. One of the things I wanted to comment on with this Lone Star Precision uh, angle indicator, sorry, angle cosine indicator, is that it comes with one inch inserts in case you have a one inch scope. I have a 30 mil uh, scope right now, but if you had a one inch scope, it does come with inserts and they're not the crappy inserts that float or slip around. These ones have been milled properly. You can see the lip on it. There's a lip inside of that and I don't know why other companies like name brand companies that are not producing that. I mean, if you can, you might as well. This is just a, a, a good quality improvement in the product. I like that. So if you're running a little one inch tube, I don't know why you are, but if you are, you can run it with one of these and that'll help you get that in there. Um, so we got this dialed in. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a pop can at 80 yards here real quick. Just make sure my dope is still good. Nothing changed. And then if that looks good, then I'm going to shoot something right here at like probably, man, I'll, I'll mill range both of them, but I'm pretty sure that's like 15 yards. It's almost just down like this, 10, 10 degrees down. And I'm going to shoot both of them off this Caldwell dead pod or this dead shot field pod. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna call that 15 yards. We look pretty level. I like what I see. I might make one more fine adjustment on there, but what I'm looking at here, it's actually gonna be more like 18 degrees. And so I'm gonna use that as a point of reference. That's gonna change my math. I'm gonna use that as opposed to uh, shooting 15 yards straight shooting 15 yards down. I wish I had a big distance down right now. I'm gonna to have to wait until I can go hiking with this thing a little bit. And I'll show you from a big top of a hill down to the bottom uh, how effective that is. But uh, yeah, let me get this set up and we'll take some shots. All right, so we're gonna get going here. I ranged my first pop can. And uh, that's actually only 70 yards away. I thought it was 80. That's the advantage of using your mill dots. If you have really crisp, clear mill dots and you understand them well, you can use them effectively for that. And uh, today I'm using some Gamo Hunter pellets. I found these to be pretty accurate. They're a different weight than the Crossman. Um, 7.9 grains that I usually use. Those are the domed ones. Carry a little more weight out there. Um, they're good for a real long range, but uh, for this intermediate, you know, 70 yards kind of thing, I can use the uh, Gamo Hunters, and it seems like it keeps the point of impact pretty good. Um, we got our cosine indicator leveled out. Looks like I'm aiming down about, man, probably two degrees, and uh, that is not going to have, at, at 70 yards, that's not going to have much of a change of impact, and so I'm going to hold pretty much the same. And uh, we'll just see, make sure that my dope is still good, that when I took the scope uh, covered, or that the uh, um, the mount covers off the tops and put them back on, that I didn't change anything. And then we'll go ahead and take a real sharp angle shot. Man, there's crazy mirage coming off my roof right now. It's kind of cold out. It's pretty windy. It's about 15 miles an hour wind. Nice. All right, so 
Looks like a dope is still good. In fact, there were some crows out there. I really wanted to shoot those, but I wanted to double check first. Um, so it's perfect, uh, perfect shot on the pop can. Now let's do a shot at, uh, I don't know, like the 18, 19 degree angle, just straight down the yard and uh, see what that looks like. All right, now we're gonna do the uh, 15 yard at about 18 degrees. One thing I constantly do is when I go to adjust my parallax, I grab that cosine indicator. Indicator, it's like right in my periphery. Another thing that's kind of hard about it, <clears throat> so you can see that it's dark. I actually waited a little too long, so I was having fun shooting. This. Um, level is only open on one side. It's closed off with aluminum on the back side to make it a little stronger and whatnot and uh, just connect the pieces but it doesn't illuminate very well um, because the light is that way and I'm towards the dark. Um, it's not really a big deal actually unless you shoot in the dark a lot. There's one. Two. Let's go check them out. So here's our 15 yard group of those two shots. Kind of wish I would have done more just to fill in this whole uh, brown section within the black because the rifle will easily do it. It's not hard, but it is kind of impressive off of this Predator stand, this uh, Caldwell field pod. Um, it's just harder to make clean shots with that. But that was great. So there's our, our 15 yard target using that angle cosine indicator. Hopefully I'll get to use um, this sometime soon, shooting down some uh, bluffs or some really steep banks, something like that, some steep hills, and uh, just show you how the math works with that and how this simplifies your guesswork. Other than that, this has been Edgy Reviews. Look forward to a review on the Caldwell Field Pod and the Lone Star Precision Cosine Angle Indicator soon. Thanks.